Smith, please. We need your attention on the stage. Sister Bumi Salako Smith, your attention is near the stage. We'll be commencing this program in the next two, three minutes. Please, we beg of your pardon to please give us these two minutes as we put the fin uh, final touches to arrangement for this event. God bless you. Who miss Alako Smith, please? everybody we are going to start the program we want to thank you for coming we are going to start with an opening prayer so please could we stand up and take an opening prayer please father in the name of jesus we thank you for the privilege of life, we thank you for this gathering in remembrance of your son. King of glory, we thank you for his life. Thank you for blessing us to be partakers of the blessing of his life. Father, as we celebrate his return unto you, we commit the occasion into your hands. We ask that your hand and your mighty power will rest upon this meeting in Jesus' name. Father, we ask that the Holy Spirit will chairman and champion everything that we shall do today and it shall be to the glory of your holy name in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. We are going to uh, do a quick Bible reading. Matthew chapter 5, verse 1 to 14. The Bible reading is going to be taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Second? Second Corinthians 5. I was going to read my Bible, but I didn't bring my glasses. It's too little for me to read without glasses. So I decided to use my phone. That's why I'm a little bit unprepared. I apologize. Second Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 1 to 7. And it reads. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that had wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also has given us the earnest of the spirit. Therefore we 
are always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. May the Lord bless the reading of his holy word in Jesus' name. Amen. As we take the first aim, sometimes like a light surprises. Shall we please rise? God bless you. Sometimes our self surprises, our child of God will save the light of one who rises, which is in his wings. bless you. We thank the Lord for the wonderful opportunity given to us one way or the other to be a friend, associate, colleague, brother, sister, son, daughter, and wife to our dearly departed Charles Chukwemeka Ngogo. We know him in different ways, but tonight I'd like to invite Brother Tony to read his biography to let us know more about the man that we celebrate today, Charles Chukwemeka Ngogo. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Tony. 
God bless you, sir. Charles. Sir Charles Chupemeka Mogu was born in 1950. Was born on the 27th April 1959 to the family of Mr. and Mrs. Nicholas Akuogu Mogu in Owere, Imo State. He was the first of the seven children of the parents, though he has an elder brother. He took care of the younger ones while we were all growing, especially during the Nigerian Civil War. He was, he was a father, a mother, a brother, and everything to those of us living as at that time. The mother was a trader. The father went to Nigerian civil war. So right from his tender age. He has been is somebody with God taking care of the younger ones. At the time of schooling, he started his education at St. Paul's Catholic School, Ibutemeta, Lagos. Being a very brilliant person, at the time he was about to go to secondary school, he got admission at the Government College, K2. Actually, as at the time he was filling his entrance form, he filled Bobby College. The parents were not happy with him because there was no money, no finance to take care of him. But God being the only savior, did not only give him a better place, but gave him an authoritative school, which is government secondary school, K2. While in government secondary school, K2, though I was young, but I remember in several occasions, I and our mother do visit him in school. He was a footballer, not only from the secondary school, even from the primary school, because we attended the same school. And then he was popularly known as Lefty or they call him Charlie Champion. He was a trainee learning boxing. And he did very well in sports. In 1974, he passed out from the secondary school with an excellent result. That took him to a higher school, Federal Government College, Udogulu, in Ogun State. 
and he finished in 1979. And immediately got admission to study accounting in University of Lagos. Sir Charles Mwogu is one of the, at his time, he was one of the first undergraduates and he was one of the graduates in the, he was the first graduate in the Mwogu's compound and one of the gra first graduates in the community as a whole. He came out, he passed out with an excellent result. In 1993, he qualified as a chartered accountant. In less than 10 years from then, he was made a fellow. Charles Mogu, just like I went back from the childhood, has been a leading champion. Not only in his house, not only in the entire Mogu family or the community where he came from, or communities where he came from. Why I referred to communities is even why we were in Lagos. He has an excellent record with his schoolmates, with his mates in the same area. And his philanthropies has started right from what when he became chartered. When he became a chartered accountant, and since then he has been helping people exceedingly. In 1987, while he was doing his national call at the youth service under Akintola Williams and Co. He married his lovely wife. And God willingly, they have issues, four issues, two boys and two girls. Sir Charles Mogu. is a loving father, a loving husband, a loving son to the children, a loving brother to me and to all others, to the entire family, to the community he came from. Until his depart, Sir Charles Mogu has been his philanthropist. I cannot recount all he has done, but I can boldly tell it to all of us here. Now, when we come to religion, he has trained so many reverend fathers which he sponsored and also helped in training. Presently, in the community where he came from, he is single-handedly training up to 100 people in different higher institutions. When I say 100, I am looking at
Mm. 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 Wave. Network. Yeah, network. You think they will fix it back? We should fix it. It was so good, though. I don't know. <laughs> No, <laughs> 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 I'd like to call on our dear sister, one of the children of our dear brother, to read the Bible passage for this service, a night of tribute. May I please call on Sister Shema, please, to read the Bible passage. Okay, I, I, God bless I, you. Thank you. For a blasting. Seven seventeen to twenty six. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Matter said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Word of the Lord. Do you believe this? If you believe in the Lord Savior, Jesus Christ, and you believe and trust in him, say so you never die. Our brother really believe, and we know he's alive in Jesus. As we continue this program, we'll be taking tributes spanning the early life of our dear brother. And um, I'd like to also invite those who have been associated with him in one form or the other, University of Lagos and other part of his um, professional lives to please see our brother, Elie Otofanui, to pencil their names for the tribute for this evening. For those who were in school to him, with him, in primary school, 
they want to give a tribute for tonight, and they are represented by Mr. Patrick Oguamanam, who shared the same primary school with their brother. Patrick Oguamanam, please. We like to keep this to two, two minutes as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Charles Chukweneka Nwogo is someone I know in April 1970, immediately after the Civil War. We attended the same primary school. It was in A, I was in B. Only the father and my father were friends, we never knew. Then his mother and my mother too, they were friends. We attended the same church, St. Paul Catholic Church. Precisely in March 1973, we had our first Holy Communion. It was in front, I was behind. In 74, when we finished from the school, or even before that, Charles was a member of the school team. He plays the left foot back while I play the outside right. In fact, I was called property. It was Charles that gave me that name, property. Why I call him Charlie Champion. We moved to the secondary school. When we got there, we never knew as nature. I didn't know we would meet there again. We met. Uh, on that very day, when we were locating room, I discovered that both of us were placed in the same room and on the same bed. I was up, he was down. Then on Monday, class allocation, we were put together again. So it's like he's more than a friend to me. In fact, a real brother. One thing I'm very sure of is I know they said, out of sight is never out of mind. Charles Mwogu will continue to be in my mind all the days of my life. I say, may his soul rest in perfect peace. Amen. 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 Next on the line is the secondary school. We share the same secondary school government college, K2, and I call Bumi. Salakosmi to speak. Thank you. I'm going to call all GCKites in the room to stand up. And we are going to sing our anthem to Charles. Are we set? One, two, three, go. Labor and serve with probity. 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 Thank you. Huh? Oh, so labor. That, we have more than one. <laughs> labor and serve. We probity, live is a motto, labor and serve with probity. It is a motto, the alpha rub, and the alpha, it is a uniform. Thank you. Hold on. Kaki and white, it is a uniform. Oh, GCK. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I am, I am sad but grateful that I have the privilege to speak at this occasion. Uh, the lesson I learned is that time becomes the most expensive commodity the older you grow. Uh, just February, yeah, right, February 2021, no, yeah, we are in the new year. February 2021, my husband and I just uh, went to slot to buy something for the phone. And I ran into someone. I looked up, it was Charles. And to my shock, the first thing my husband said was, ah, I remember him, he's your classmate because of the reunion that we had. 
in 2019, um, I went to Government College K2, and like his brother said, none of us applied to go to that school. We all I applied to go to Reagan Memorial. Some people met all this, but Lagos State that year decided to set up five government colleges. And so what they did was to just take a little bit from all the list of the schools in Lagos State and they made us together. It was the best thing that happened to us. We are so excited to have been in government college K2. And uh, like uh, Patrick said, Charles and I were the same class, 1B, from 1974 to 1979. And you said he was brilliant. Our class was extremely competitive. I considered myself to be brilliant, but I never was able to get, I think the best position I ever made was like the ninth or 10, because there were a lot of very brilliant folks in my class, and Charles was one of them, a great mathematician, and we, I call, we called him Charlie Main because we did some history lessons and then, you know, that name came and that's what we call him. The most wonderful thing that we will all take away was the brotherhood. Charles was dependable to be the philanthropist. So when you said that, I mean, I knew that to be true for GCK, but that's who he was because that's what you said, that for, at every level, wherever he found himself, he always challenged us to, if we say, well, uh, we want to make a budget of one million. Charles will say, no, this thing is not going to be good. Let's make it two million. And if there is a shortfall, he makes it up. And we are forever grateful to have known him. I personally, I mean, it's so unbelievable and surreal to me that he's gone. But then again, we read in the Bible, it said to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. So that's why we do not despair because we know that he is present with the Lord. The Bible said the Lord will never forget a generous man. And our brother was the epitome of generosity. From when we had to share Gary in class one, I mean, if you run out, you can always rely that Charles will have your back. Now, he had a wicked sense of humor. He would tease you. I remember we went to the reunion and uh, just before we left, he told the principal that he needed to detain one of us. I shall not name names today. Uh, because he was very, very stubborn. <laughs> and that he was, you know, a troublesome student. Charles was a gentle student and a very wonderful footballer. I don't know what position he played in our school team. Number three. He was our world number three. And he was extremely wonderful. I am so proud. You don't want to know how proud I am to know Charles Sumogu and to associate with him. And he's not even my parent. So I can imagine what pride you, his children, and his family will feel to actually be blood related to him. None of us, I mean, everybody, we are right now on Zoom. All our classmates worldwide, they are hooked up on Zoom to be a part of this occasion. If it was possible, all of them would have been here. Many of them are not in Lagos, but the few of us that happen to be around, we cannot miss this event. So we just want to congratulate ourselves that God caused an angel called Charles Mugu to be a part of our lives. In whatever capacity he was a part of your life, I don't think you regret knowing him. Amen. No, I don't think so. And he left wonderful, precious memories. That I mean, for my husband to pick him up, my husband is not Nigerian, by the way. And immediately he saw him, he said, I know him. That's your classmate because I remember the reunion, his pictures. And he heard all the things that he said and what he did. Single-handedly, he showered our principal, our teachers with money that, I mean, he made us proud. So we are very proud to be associated with him. We thank you all for coming to honor his memory. And we pray that the example that he left us of generosity we will all imbibe it. I thank you for coming once again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, we still hello, hello, GCK. This is NLA Ivan. As you like to listen to Government College Udogolu, where Charles Addis A levels. May I please call on Lola Gubadia? Hello, Lola Gubadia, I believe. 
uh, encourager was already looking at the steps. I'm wondering if I could <laughs> surmount it. We now realize we're getting older. Um, Charles, we didn't call him Charles because we had two Charles in our class in Odobolu then when we we're doing our A-levels. So we called him Charlie and the other Charles was Charles. Um, I want some humor. Um, Charles suffered from, he used to be very anxious when we were doing exams. I don't know how he was in secondary school, but for A-levels, um, when we want to do exams, Charles will sweat so much, his fingers will be sweaty and he will need a handkerchief. So we'll be giving yeah. him, the girls in the class will give him a handkerchief to hold his biro. Meanwhile, this man has done all that one day. When the results come, they go pass, <laughs> you know? And I'm wondering, so why are you so, what's, what's that, why are you anxious? What is the anxiety for? But obviously, maybe it was some condition. But once he was so focused, he would worry about it. But he would do so well. Um, it's funny that Bumi, as they say, people are like water. Bumi as well. I know Bumi very well, but we, we served in Kaduna together. Bumi talked of his generosity. I went to Unilag with him as well, but I hadn't seen him for a long time. Um, then my father died two years ago, and they said... Um, Law, who I was also in Unilag with, um, now said, um, he didn't tell me. I was in the hall and he said, ah, I brought a surprise for you. And who did I see? Charlie. Charlie, of course, was as generous as ever. After this happened, I was so pleased with it. After this happened, I remember I was now trying to get in touch with him in last year. This was around March because... Um, Another classmate was um, were doing something for a classmate. And I just thought, ah, this Charles is so generous. He's such, you know, let me, let me, let me, you know, talk to him. I called and I tried, sent him. He read the messages, but I didn't hear anything from him. Then I think another, um, I think Law now told me, oh, he wasn't feeling well. And I just sent a message saying, oh, you know, hope you get better soon. We'll see you. We send our love and little did I know that that was the last, you know, he read the messages I sent to him, but there was no reply. Um, what, what, what I was surprised was for me, I was, um, uh, Charlie was a quiet man, but quiet, but the kind that very mischievous because the boys in our class, including, including Lawrence, they were very, in Odobolu, they were really, really mischievous. But Charles will not say anything. He won't hear, but he's in the corner. You will see him, you know. He, he, he was fun. He was fun. He was quiet. And um, he, he, he grew up to a, be a man of honor. He was such, you know, a gentle, distinguished man. And, you know, when you look at yourselves as young children, and then you think, how will this man be later on? I didn't foresee that for him, to see a very distinguished, you know, gentleman. Um, it's, it's sad that now that we got back together that he's gone again, but I can only extend my condolences to his family. Um, you, you had a very wonderful son, husband, cousin, family member. Um, may his soul rest in perfect peace. Thank you very Amen. much. Amen. Amen. Do we have a representative from Unilag? Oh, thank God. Mr. Shubodu, please. Can you please step forward? From the accountancy department, Unilag. Praise the Lord. My name is Charles Olayinka Hoshibudu, uh, the second uh, Charles that she was talking about, the last speaker was talking about. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. Um, I first met Charles Nwogu in October 1979. I first met Charles Nwogu in 1979, October. We met at Federal Government College Odogulu and uh, we left the Bulu in 1981. And we met again in the University of Lagos, Department of Accounting. In our first year, 1981, we were in the same room for that first year. Second and third years, you know, we were not in the same hall. We were not too far from one another. And then in the final year also, uh, so we left in 1984. We, I did NYSE in uh, former Bender State and he went on in his own NYSE too. We, as we continued to grow, when we got our heart drops and we were about getting married, I told him that I've gotten somebody I was going to get married to. I told him the name, Victoria Ojubayo Adelaja. He told me his own too. He said he's, uh, he has found somebody that he's going to marry, that her name is Teresa Ewenemad. We celebrated and then we got married and then we began to give birth to children. One day, the children were going to, I mean, after some time, he relocated from where he was to the street next to mine in Pedro. I was eating one morning when his children were going to school. Ah, are you not going to ask your driver, one car and one driver to take them to school? He said, no. Ah, they should learn how to move in Lagos. They are Lagos children. So, <laughs> so he put them on the road and gave them transport. I think they were in Unilag International School that time or something like that. I was surprised, you know, he, but he told me that it is part of discipline. You know, if you want your children to grow up properly and know the road and not spoil them because you have the money, they should go on the road and go through what uh, people are going through so they know how life is. Not that they get spoiled, they just enter one car with AC from the house, they drop in the school, in the classroom with AC, they enter the car, you know, it's like, you know. <laughs> so he wanted his children to know what life is all about. So it was from that, uh, when he moved, I moved from Pedro, I moved to my own house, he still moved from Pedro and moved to his own house in Surulere. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We have been together since that 1979 October. We have never really parted ways. And when we began to work, I trained with Ernst and Young, qualified in 1987 as a chartered accountant. And then he too joined Akintola Williams. From there, he moved to another farm, and then from there he began his practice while I was still working in the banks. Praise the Lord. So we've been together for that time. Charles Ungwogu is a very, very generous person. He's been a very good friend. He's the one who will not allow people around him uh, to suffer. Whatever he has, he will use it to help people around him. Honestly, he has been a wonderful friend. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. May his soul rest in perfect peace. Amen. Amen. Charles Chukwebeka Wogu. A complete story of love and affection to each and everyone. 
he has written a very nice history. And with what we read in the Bible passage, he is alive. But we are going through this phase to understand that we owe the pain to write the history of our own lives. I'd like to bring to our remembrance one more or two tributes given by a friend who was with him in government college in Ketu, who was with him in federal government college Udugolu, and as well as University of Lagos, do not accounting. And also another friend from Government College Ketu, who by reason of location is not here with us today. And of course, a friend, Mr. Andubisi, will now listen to this. Please, can we play the video? you financial material resources he will support you Charles was a very good Christian condolences to the family of Charles G. and the child Charles is a great guy huh he sure was we were in the same set, but not in the same class, so I didn't really interact with him that much. But I watched him play on the field, on the football field. Very good player. As people have said, a very good defender. I can't remember whether there was two or three um, who played left or right back. Um, I left Nigeria pretty quickly after GCK, so I didn't really interact much with him. But um, I was so pleased i so grateful for the support I received when my parents passed away. And when my mother passed away, Charles was there to support. I love others, of course. But yes, that's, that would be my enduring memory, the support I received from Charles and my mother and the Jesus guys. God bless your family. Rest in peace, Charles. We'll now take the second hymn. When peace like the river ascended to the wind. And um, while we are doing that, please, I'd like to inform that um, the members or representative of the ICANN is um, 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 office and also um, clients and business associates 
if they are around, we would like to take them at the next set of tributes. Thank you. When peace like a river attended my way, shall we please be upstanding as we take the next in? God bless you.
seated. It is indeed well. Our God, our Lord, our Redeemer, has paid the price. He has given us that assurance that there is a life even after death. We thank the Almighty God for dying our death that we may live his life. Blessed be the name of God Almighty. In continuation of this program, we would like to hear one or two from the ICANN representative. I believe our brother was member of the Sruli Registry Society. He operates from this area. And also some of his employees, if they are around, one or two of them can say a word in honor of him. And I'd like also to refer to um, clients and business associates, if there's any around. While we are waiting for that, while we are waiting for them to come up, there is a part of Mr. Tony's uh, remark in the biography of our dear brother. And I would like us to listen to what one of our friends in Government College Ketu, by name Jimmy Agbaje, said. There's a video clip that is sent to us, which depicts what happened in school as a then, and which also buttress what our dear brother said. Unknowingly, for us in school then, we didn't know we are holding the tiger by the tail. I would like to call, I would like to please ask that we play the clip on Jimmy Agbaje. Jimmy Agbaje, please. On one of the top floors of the classrooms. There was no light there. And one tells one made use of in the classroom as well as the special library only on Saturdays. This was one of the Saturday evenings, and there was just one mouse on the card. The protagonist won a came seriously into a corner and just all was in the blue corner. The classroom was jam-packed with lots of excitement. Packing by the supporters, mainly his classmates from C class. I won't mention names, but I know myself, were being very braggadocious as usual. Meanwhile, Justin who sat down quietly in his corner, receiving his final strategic instructions for the bout. I recall there were no boxing gloves, but bandages were worn round the hands. It was a piano fight. The noise coming out of Akim's corner was tremendous, to say the least. The marks right We are going to knock him out in round one. See, Ola, don't you know Akin? Don't mess around with Akin. Akin with a beat, motor tower boys in the Kenya bus stop. You will see what that will be. You will see. Now, Other funny comments were added. Akin was pumped up and ready for the fight. Charles now had his back against the wall. Nowhere to go, nowhere to, to hide. The challenger looks over and he bear with him. Round one. Charles survived 
that round. Just survive that round. Sorry, I think there's a challenge here. But what happened was that after the round one, after the round one, all we know is that from round one ending to the end of round four, Akin Filiki was on the downward slope. And our dear brother. Charles was on the ascension and Akin was going down and was going down and was going down until the end of round four. And that took a lot of steam out of Akin as a fighter in the school because all the braggados, at least we now know that we have a champion in Charles. Though small in stature, but mighty in punch. <laughs> Glory be to God. Glory be to God. We continue. I'd like to call on one of those people that also mean a lot to us as students then, because we mingle. We are in the first set. We are in the first set, and we have our juniors around and they have opinions of what we do or what we do not do our reactions and our actions i'd like to call on sister felicia please sister felicia one of government college k2 graduates <laughs> praise the lord Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm happy I'm standing before you to say one or two things about Charles. I didn't finish in 1979. He was my senior. I finished in 1980. I don't know if there's any other person from my set that is here today. If not, I'm here to represent them. Charles was a very good friend to me while we were in school. He was our food prefect, isn't it? And Jimmy, I was I was his assistant. But unknown to me in those days, I was always very lazy to go to the dining room. And each time he did not spot me there, he would send food to me. And he did it on a daily basis. He had that kind of love for me. We are all Igbos, we are interacting very well. And each time we went on holidays, we visited each other. I remember after school, I didn't hear from him. I don't know how he got my number. After about 20 or 25 years, and he called, he said, Felicia, where have you been? I said, I have been in Lagos. But shortly before then, he, when he got into Unilag, our path got one day and he said, Felicia, what are you doing? I said, I'm working in National Library of Nigeria. He said, why? Others are going to school and you are here. I said, yes, my admission hasn't worked out. Charles encouraged me. Each time he didn't have lectures, he would come to my office, which was very close to Unilag, and he would come, Felicia, how far about your admission? So I really appreciated uh, what he did. And eventually, I got admission into University of Ibadan. And when I finished, I started working with National Library of Nigeria. And Charles would call me, Felicia, how are you? I said, I'm fine. Then, unfortunately, I got posted to Abuja. I said, Charles, my family are in Lagos. And I don't know how I'll function in Abuja without my husband and my children. I want to retire voluntarily. And he encouraged me. I said, if I leave, what do I do? Just said, Felicia, don't worry. It cannot be where your husband is not and where your children, uh, no, where they are not. So you have to come back. He encouraged me. And when I came back, the rest is history. And then I hinted Charles a few months before he demised that my daughter will be getting married and that he's likely to be the chairman of the occasion. But unfortunately, Charles did not make that occasion. So my prayer for family is that God will grant you the fortitude to bear this irreparable loss in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that Charles will find, you know, rest in the bosom of our Lord Jesus Christ. May his gentle soul 
rest in peace. I will never forget Charles. And one other thing, when my sister passed on, each time I ran into Charles, he would dip his hand in his pocket without asking, say, Felicia, take. He was, people that said here that he was very generous, that is just to put it mildly. He was extremely generous. And I really appreciated Charles while he was alive. I will miss him as a friend. We'll all miss him as a, a classmate. I'll miss him as my senior. And I pray that the Lord will continue to be with the family in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Charles was, uh, I was in the same class, actually, with Charles. I was in 1B, 2B, 3B, 4B, and 5B. But one incident that really came to my mind was when I was down and I was almost out. I was sick. Most of the classmates don't notice. They were just, well, it's still the same normal person. But Charles took note of it. And he came to me. It was like a nurse to me. One thing I know, I was like a baby in the class. Short, small, couldn't handle a lot of things. But I thank God, I have somebody that is smaller than me. I'm not looking in any direction. <laughs> but Charles was there. He showed affection and love. He ebbed out. May so rest in peace. I'd like to take us across the shores of Nigeria. And um, one of us, he had to take his time off work to be part of this. And I would like to call on Iban Enene to please add his voice. Iban Enene. I will have Iban from USA. Good afternoon, everybody. It's morning where I am in Michigan. I am so, so, so happy to see my fellow classmates honor Sir Charles Nwogu, my classmate. I was in class A, Charles was in class B. I was the senior prefect while Charles was the food prefect. And of course, everybody knows what that means. He gave me access to lots of food. Um, I want to just say that the gathering here today says it all, that Charles was a very good person. Charles was pleasant, and he was quiet about everything that he did. I want to thank everybody for putting this together. Unfortunately, I'm not able to come. I was one of those that uh, Charles requested to come on and uh, see him if I could. Unfortunately, I could not make that, but I was with him in spirit and I prayed with Elaye for Charles's memory and so small before he felt sick um voice. i'd like to speak to the family charles's wife mrs theresa Nwogu, and to his four children his brother and family i want to just say that please take solace in the lord charles's life was cut short he didn't live long enough, but the few years he was on earth, he made strides that only a giant could have made. His strides 
and his footprint is everywhere, everywhere that he was, everywhere that he went, everything he did was perfection in excellence. I wanted to take some. Come thanks. By the grace of God, we all completed and we started struggling in life. And we taught it fit to gather ourselves again after some years that we've left the university. And uh, we had our president in the class in our state in University of Lagos. We beckoned on him. He's now a chief, a high chief in the uh, state, in the Belkuta. We beckoned on him that we want him to lead us again. As we all gather together, even with the governor. And we were putting heads together that where should we meet? We were looking for a good place where we could gather together. And we were talking about hotels. So, the president then sent me on an errand that I should investigate with uh, the Kedja Airport to tell that that could be a good place for us to gather again together. So in my discussion, talking to the other colleagues and ex-students, uh, I got across to Charles and I said, Charles, we are trying to put, we are trying to get a place in the Kedja Airport to tell that we want to have our inaugural meetings there. A child told me, he calls me, or oh, got me, or oh, got me. He's a humble guy. So, oh, got me, why, are you, why do you want to go and waste money in the Kedja Hotel? That I have a small place here that I should come and see it. If the place can accommodate all of us. Then I got back to the president and I told him, Charles is asking me to come and see a small place. If that place could accommodate us, I will contact him. I will get across to him and we'll see. And oh, I visited his hotel and he said it's available for us. I got back to the president and we distributed the address. We all met on that wonderful day. Charlie gave us wonderful rece uh, reception, meal and everything. And we looked at him, we said, we started talking. We gave all the history that every one of us had passed through since we left the university and how we are gathering together again. Charlie was a nice guy. If people say he's generous, if you are not close to him, you will not know. But if you are close to him, you will know. He's a giver. He's a giver to a fault. When we raise money, I know how much he will contribute. In every, everything we are doing, and we looked at it, highly destabilized person. You can never see that in him, in him. We looked at him. We couldn't know what to do with him. We said, Charlie should be the next person who will be taking over the presidency 
of that association. So we, we come together to arrange it in the order of ICANN. When the, the president leaves, the vice takes over. So I was looking up to him to take over from me when I'll be leaving that seat. And every time there's an issue, I will give him a call. Charlie, how do we go about this thing? What is your view on this matter? And it's going to be, it's going to come out clearly and tell you, or guide me, this is what I think we should do. And I said, Charlie, thank you. Don't worry. I'll carry you there along. When Charlie lost his mother, I think that was about uh, uh, three or four years ago. And he told us he lost his mother. Uh, essentially, all of us will get to your village to do your mother's burial. We went there. When we got to the village, we landed, we flew to Uweri from Uweri. We traveled to the village. When I got there, we did the burial and as Charlie took us to his house. I said, Charlie, how do you put this kind of structure in the village? And you are staying in that place in Surulere. I said, come and tell me what is your plan. That you must have this plan to come and build this kind of structure in this village. He said, oh, God, me, I'm coming back here. He said, you are coming back here? Is it your retirement, in your old age? that you put this kind of massive structure here. I said, anybody who sees your size, you are small, but you are mighty. So when we returned and we were going and uh, he felt sick, I was contacting him, we were talking, but when he had to travel to, back to US to meet the family, we couldn't talk again, like somebody said, when you send him a text message, he picks it, but he doesn't get back. When we heard of his demise, it was tough for us to break the news in the association. I couldn't break the news. I had to start pre-handling every member that there's a big shock that is going to hit the platform. And that this big shock, all of us just have to be Come with it. I told my secretary, secretary, please don't announce this. Members kept asking me, where is Charles? Where is Charles? Charles has been quiet for some time. Then I said, don't worry, Charles is okay. He traveled out, but he will soon be with us. I couldn't break the news. I had to start rehandling everybody. And by the time the news came out, it was a bank on the platform. Charles, who just leave us that way unceremoniously. But in my mind, to conclude, is that my takeaway from the departure of Charles is that God is taking the righteous home one by one. And that those of us that are oh, my that the end time is very close. And those who have completed their assignments, God is picking them one after the other. And my prayer is, when all of us will have completed the assignment God sent for us here, we will not be found wanting on the last day. So I wish my friend, the hey, hey, assistant, vice president, Charles Uwogu, a perfect rest in the bosom of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. We'll just quickly do a revisit to USA. And I believe that um, the flight is now okay as we listen to Iban Enene. Iban Enene. Yes, um, thank you. Good morning. Well, it's morning where I am. Good afternoon, everybody over in Nigeria and the rest part of the world. Uh, my name is Enene Iban. Uh, I am calling in to honor my brother and my friend, Sir Charles Nwogu. Uh, we met in school, Government College K2, 1974 through 1979. 
I have not seen Charles since 1979 when we left school, but I've heard from my colleagues and my brother and best friend, Elayo Trufanoe, about uh, Charles Nwogu post-Government College K2, post-1979. Everything I've heard about uh, my friend Charles and my brother has been exceedingly good. And uh, I ask myself this, why is it that good people don't last long? Well, God giveth, God take it. I am not, uh, I, I just, I'm at a loss. And uh, I just think good because for his classmates to put this together shows that Charles was a superbly nice person. Charles was a human being per se in the words of who a human being is. I am happy to be associated and to have associated with Mr. Nwogu. And I thank God for letting him cross path with me. Everybody here who is honoring Charles Nwogu, I pray God bless each and every one of you and may you also all be honored at the appropriate time. To the family of uh, my brother Charles Nwogu, to his wife, Mrs. Teresa Nwogu, his four children, his brothers, sisters, his family, uh, his classmates, his workers, his friends. I want to tell you to take heart. Uh, God knows why he gave Charles to us. Charles lived very short. But the short life that he lived, only 62 years, he has achieved what somebody who lived a hundred years could not have achieved. Charles has left a footprint in the sands of time. And I want the family to take solace in the fact that all of these people who have come to honor Charles shows the kind of father, the kind of husband, and the kind of brother you all had. I pray that God in his wisdom and mercies grant him his soul eternal rest and grant the rest of the family peace grant you the fortitude to bear the irreparable loss and as you continue with the ceremonies sending our brother home to his maker i pray for peace i pray for journey mercies to the family and to all parties concerned i pray that the goodness and mercies of the Lord would follow all of you all the rest of your life. Take heart and may Charles Nwogu's soul rest in peace. Thank you all my classmates for putting this together. Thank you every other person who put this together. May God bless you all. Thanks. We thank God for the association that we had with our, our brother, Charles Chukwimika Ngugu. Please, at this point, I'd like to inform the house that um, we'll be taking tributes from his immediate family, immediate family, and um, after which we'll be winding down gradually immediate family of Charles, and that will be after we've sung the next aim, safe in the hands of Jesus. Shall we please rise, safe in the arms of Jesus.
in the arms of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We now take tributes from members of his immediate family, cousin, and also other town relatives. We would like to um, acknowledge now members of his family closing on this group with Charles Chukwemeka Jr. to take the last of this family. Once he stepped forward, we believe that he represents every other person. But before then, we will give the room for members of his family to please step forward. Any member of the family, please step forward. Thank you, sir. Introduce yourself and your relationship. My name is Barista Sylvester Anthony Wog, his immediate younger brother. Sir Charles Mogu is a motivator. And I know that whatever I am today, whatever I do today, I live by his motivation. It does not take failure or mistake as an answer. And I know that due to his motivation, I've been able to, I've been able to achieve and to get to where I am today. He led me, he drew me into politics. And to some extent, I know that I did well due to his motivation. Though I was in the East, a motivational attitude on what to do and what not to, to be done has given me the little grace I have in politics today. In education, I can remember in 1982, 81, 82, that was when I did my first GC. I am not good in reading so much, especially literature. What I know in literature today is what he taught me. Within two weeks, he taught me, my, he taught me literature, economics, government, mathematics, and as I stand before you here, everything he taught me in these subjects are still with me. Because I can tell you that I did not read before I went in for the literature GCE then and the WAEC. All I did is just to sit down, think over how we discuss why he was teaching. And I made my results in just one touch. Even in my university days, as I was going in, he gave me a target. And he said, if you don't meet these targets, that is your luck. And I had to walk towards that target. And I thank God. I graduated when my mates were also graduating. Why I was going to law school, most of my mates then had one problem or the other. But I don't know how and where my love is 
my law school fees for speech, the uniform and everything. He just asked me how much will it be, and I told him, and it was speech immediately. He is, he is not just a motivator, he is a father. And after the death of our father and our mother, he is the only person I could look on to, on to till his deadness. And up to last, I speak with you. And also, as we go ahead, I still find it difficult to believe that he is no more with us. But wherever he is, God, in his infinite mercy, we give him the grace to be with the angels. Thank you. Thank you. We would like to take the next before I call on our dear brother. Any other please? Thank you. Yeah, yes. Okay. Good evening, all. My name is Philip Osuji, a uh, fellow of ICANN and also a cousin to Lake Charles Mwogu. Uh, I want to thank the OCS Association of uh, K2, Government College K2, who put this together. I say kudos to you because it's not easy to do something like this. And it also shows the love you, know, you had when you were in school. I went to St. Timbers College. Akoka. I left before Charles. I was a year ahead of him. Of course, I've been senior. There's a few years difference. But we were so close. I remember when I was working in Nestle, he was in Unilag then, and he was to come to my place, to my office. We were so close. And we, you know, as young boys, we were ambitious, and then we grew up together. He was a very nice person. And when he began to, when he qualified, if I, as a matter of fact, I qualified the same uh, year 1990, we became members of ICANN, the same diet. It was okay, we now we qualify. So, what I'm going to do? I said, okay, I'm going to, uh, uh, you know, try the banking sector. I left Nestle, then I went to AfriBank, defunct now. Then Charles himself, I think he worked with Deloitte. After Deloitte, he set up his practice. And it's, it blossomed. Apart from the practice, he also had his. Um, uh, investment in other uh, areas of the economy. Branch manager of AfriBank, that was 1995, 96 in Port Harcourt. He came to my house. Then I, I, I used to live in the GRE part of Port Harcourt, at GRE phase two. So he came in and we we're talking. So as we were talking, we just talked to you know, young people, said, look, what, what are we going to do in life? And we're just you know, projecting. And okay, there was something that was uh, happening that he would let me know. So when he went back to Lagos, he called me one evening. He said, ah, that uh, he had made some good money that uh, the, a contract, you know, I think a tax contract he won, that they paid him some uh, good uh, fee. And I said, okay, young man, what do you intend to do? And the first thing he told me was that he has asked his children to just choose where they want to study. And I said, whoa, that's, is it just his family? I said, look, his priority is his children, their well-being. And he said that his ambition was to make sure they all schooled abroad. And by the grace of God, they schooled abroad and they became young uh, adults who are responsible. I say kudos to, to him for that because uh, sometimes he may have all the money, but to Spend becomes an issue, but that's not with Charles. He never, uh, you know, stepped back when it comes to spending. In fact, when it comes to spending for a good cause, unfortunately, he left us too soon. In fact, I was devastated when I heard about his uh, demise, and I said, oh, my God, 
this guy died very young. This nice person, he was a nice person. So not perfect like all of us, but I, on the average, I'll say a nice person. So I'm taking the opportunity to express my condolences to the family, of course, my family, that we should take courage and bear this loss because it's uh, something we never expected. Though death will always come, but for somebody who just made 62, and uh, you know, we, you know, we're hoping that we have lived longer, which unfortunately he left. But we take solace in the in his achievements. We were like, what, like, like, like what, what somebody said. He said, "Look, it is not how long you live, man. I think what matters is what you are able to achieve." Some live up to 80, but can't achieve what those solace in that. And yeah, this loss, you know, the way it came. Thank you so much. May his soul rest in the peace of our Lord. Amen. I'd like to call on our dear brother, Charles G. Who is going to speak on behalf of all the children, the family, and the grandchildren? Charles Jr. Thank you. Um, firstly, I wanted to say thank you to everyone for organizing this event. Um, we're extremely humbled by the tribute we've gotten today. Um, we thank everyone for coming, taking time out today to celebrate my dad. Honestly, uh, profoundly from the depth of our hearts, we really appreciate this. Um, over the next few weeks, we'll start making a more concrete burial plan, burial arrangement plans, and um, we'll share it with everyone. We want everyone to know that we want them to be as involved as possible in in this arrangement you know my dad is not for us alone and we want everyone in any way they can to come you know to come together and um, help us celebrate his life again i want to tell you guys thank you very much like the whole family you know i started crying at some point and i wasn't crying out of sadness you know i i haven't in my life experienced this kind of love i thank you guys so much Mr. Eli, thank you very much thank you very much I really, really, really appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Two more, and we listen to what the Lord has to say to us before we go. I'd like to call on my brother, the one. Okay, let me keep that for now. Maybe he report himself. Brother Ruti Mifashakin. Ruti Mifashakin, please. Um, good evening, everyone. <laughs> Um, it's, um, let me thank our Patu for giving me this opportunity to speak on behalf of the first set of uh, that great school. By the way, let me announce to everybody that this is the first time that uh, Government College K2 first set um, students will be organizing this kind of uh, special tribute for our deceased colleagues. Um, so it will tell you clearly how that Charles um, was, uh, now so easily I'm using was for Charles now. Um, Charles had been a very dear brother, dear brother to all of us. Um, you know, um, uh, Government College K2 was one of the five government colleges that came into being in um, 
October 1974, at that September 1974, um, you know, um, at that time, Lagos State had five divisions. Um, we had the Epe Division, we had the um, Lagos Division, we had the um, um, Ikorodu Division, we had the um, uh, Badagri Division, and also um, Agege Division. So um, K2 um, was um, in, in the Epe Division. So when you hear of government college K2, don't think about the K2 in uh, Niape that we were. Um, we grew up, I didn't even know that Charles was, was born in 1959, you know, because um, he, 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 we were young boys and girls and we operated like that with single minded love for one another and the love cut across tribal religious leanings i mean there wasn't we didn't know who were muslims who were christians who were Igbos, who were yoruba um, as a matter of fact charles spoke yoruba language more fluently than even yoruba people um uh, one thing that um, you will never, uh, I mean, I mean, you know, Charles Four was uh, his footballing skills. Um, I, I I asked one of our colleagues. I said, "Did Charles ever tell his family members that he was a prolific footballer? You know, did he tell them? Did he really, you know, tell them how he was?" I mean, when you hear the word small but mighty, Charles epitomized that. On the football field, I mean, truly full back, you know, and then out the attackers was to allow them to get to the byline. And will, Charles will clear the both the attacker and the ball into outside the field. That was his style. That was the way. And we used to say, ah, hmm, don't mind him. He will wogu everybody now. Do you understand? He will wogu. The, you know, I mean, you know his name. His, his last name was Wogu, you know. That he will just wogu them, you know, into, into, you know, into out of the field. And that was his style of play. And then he was also a brilliant student. You know, he was not just a prolific footballer. He was also a brilliant student. We, we had lots of fun together as, as, um, uh, as uh, 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 students of that school, of that grade school. I mean, no, I told you, we didn't have senior. We were our own senior. We, I mean, we enjoyed ourselves. So, um, one remarkable thing that will never leave my memory as a person was um, when we had our reunion uh, exactly about just uh, a little over 40 years after we left school. We left school in 79. And so in, 19, in 2019, we felt it was necessary. For us to come together as have some kind of reunion, a kind of that I think it was November 24, 23, 24, correct? 2019. On the 23rd of November 2019, we all had a, 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 a you know, we organized a trip together to our old school. And um, what actually prompted that trip was because uh, the assembly hall where many of us were came, you know, many of us were very rambunctious, you know, as uh, students, you know, somebody had said that, you know, you know, where we all got caned every, was it, was it only me? 
Was it only me? Many of us, many of us were caned, not only me. Don't point at me alone. You know, many of us were caned. Well, as a matter of fact, I was one of the first set of persons to be suspended in that school. You know, so we got word that that assembly hall was in a state of discrepitude, you know, was really, was really in, uh, 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 I mean, really falling apart. And so we all said to ourselves that we must go back to that school to check at that assembly and see what we could do to salvage the ruins. So while we were checking round, going round, you know, Charles then made, it, 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 I didn't consider it an innocuous comment. Um, I saw it as a direct hit, a direct jab at me. He told the school principal, he said, you see, this man was very stubborn when we're in school. He said, you better hold him down. Don't allow him to go. I said, hey, Charles, is that what you're saying? So I moved near him and kicked him at his butt. That, that's, you know, um, show of real camaraderie, I mean, will never leave me till I die. It's something that I'll continue to cherish, you know, because, um, I mean, Charles was a very friendly person and not one that is tight-fisted. I mean, the one that you talk about parsimonious, you know, Charles was a free giver. And anytime we had occasion, we had opportunity, I mean, we had anything to do for the sake of the school, Charles was also, was always, you know, coming out with his good gifts, with his good donations, you know, many times, very anonymously, you know, without making too much noise about it. So, um, as I've said before, The essence of life, like a great man once said, is not in its duration, but in its donation. Indeed, Charles donated his life. He showed many of us how we should really um, take life, you know, because all of us here, we don't have a permanent place on this earth. Sometime later, sometime, if not now, sometime later, all of us here will find ourselves changing state like he has done. So the very essential thing and the very most important is what impact did we really leave? Somebody said that Charles invested a lot in his family, you know, and that is uh, that touches my heart. That touches my heart. Many people, no, 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 you know, you know them everywhere. But wait, uh, did not consider huh? investment in the family something that is sacrosanct, something that is important to be done. And you see, they breed useless children. Now, we are here and we can see the products of this gentleman and madame. Great children, children that you can be proud of, children that you can say, I mean, and that is that is that is the core and the the the, the essence and the real thing about our culture and tradition that on that day that when you are when you are being buried that there are great children to bury you. So Amen. Charles Amen. lived a great life. Amen. He lived a good life. Pray, especially, that uh, because if we, as people who spent five years with Charles, 
will be so touched and so pained by this death. I don't know how it is with the people who have lived all their lives waving. I pray for God's comfort, the comfort of the Holy Spirit to abide with you, to stay with you. At that time, when you want to fill the void of Charles, demise, you know, that the Lord will come to you with his good comfort and help you. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. Sorry, sir. Hi, sir. We didn't finish that story. Uh, uh, we all know the end of the story. We we'll keep it for another day. <laughs> Brother Eli, 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 please. Eli Otrofa, no way. That is my problem from year one to five. <laughs> I couldn't pronounce my name and it's still struggling. After today, you that left. Okay. Um, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Elaye Otrofanoe, and um, I want to start by saying that I consider myself privileged to have met Charles. Privileged. We, uh, we connected in school, but not like we connected after school. Um, I was privileged to be on a committee that was set up to organize the 80th birthday party for our principal. I think that was um, 19, uh, no, 2000, and I forget the year now, 2016, thereabout. Yeah, we, we had the, we just thought, look, this guy was our principal and he was fantastic. He had all his children with us and we said, look, what, what can we do? So Charles said, uh, we all agreed and had the idea. So um, a committee was set up. Uh, Lawrence was a member of the committee. I was there, Jai was there, and that was when Charles and I really con connected. I was, uh, Charles was initially asked to collect the funds. He said, no, he was not going to do it again. Um, so we went back and forth, and eventually we set up the committee, and the, the event was such a success. And after that, we really now connected. We became friends, and whatever, and I mean whatever Charles wanted to do. Somehow it would just call me. Ah, Eli, this is what I want to do. But I, I didn't know how we just connected, but it was just unusual. But he became such a close friend of mine. I don't think there was anything, well, you know, there may be one or two, but he would tell you. And that brings me to the one point I made about Charles. Charles was an open book. If Charles if you know, if you see Charles on any issue, Charles will tell you exactly how he feels about it. It may not be popular. He will tell you. Everybody may be going left. Charles will be going right. He will tell you, this is where I stand on this matter. And no apologies. And we connected in, in that circumstance. And it's, it's for me uh, a rare privilege that I, I have to be part of the organizers of this event for him. Again, that was a first. And when this thing happened, we just, it was unanimous. For the first time, and I, I can see, you can see all of us in, in uh, lab. I think it's the first time we've had a gathering this big. And I can tell you in terms of support for, for this event, we've never had the kind of support financially, morally, uh, physically, and what have you. Bumi came all the way from uh, Dallas with her husband, and she said, she had told me way back two months ago that I will plan to be around whenever it is. And if it were going to worry, I will be there. That's the kind of love we have for him, and that's the kind of love. Um, he had an uncommon passion for humanity. Charles had an uncommon passion for hum hum humanity. It's a lesson for me, and I think it's a lesson for a lot of people. I have learned a lot about that from him. He was an epitome of humility and generosity. When you see Charles, you see him in his short sleeve shirt or in his shorts, his slippers or whatever. With people, 
he had friends high, low. He knew his, his relationships knew no class. No, he had no such thing. Now, he was a source of pride to all, all of us. All GK, uh, GC kites, Charles is a source of pride for us. It's an example of how we were taught. We were taught labor and serve with probity. We were taught uh, so many things as little children, and I think he carried that with him. Now, to the children, I'll say, look, your dad wore for some, no matter how small he was, his shoes were big. The shoes that you guys are going to fill, very big. But he has equipped you. He's equipped you uh, with education. He's equipped you with exposure. He's equipped you with fathers. You now have fathers and mothers from amongst us, including your mom. Mom, you have your so your husband's brothers are plenty. The sisters are plenty. You have a family. The GCK family is here to say, well, you've lost him, haven't gained him, but we are with you. God is with you, and he will strengthen you all through. We, plan to, we, we hope to hear from you regarding the plans as uh, we plan to uh, celebrate this a great man. And to Charles, good night, my My brother, good night, my friend. God bless you. In everything, the good books are told us to give. Ages, we bless you. You are the giver of life. You are the keeper of life. You are the sustainer of all things. We bless you for the life of our brother and friend, father, husband, family member. We thank you for a life well spent. We thank you for all the glorious tributes that we have showered on Sir Charles. Eternal God, it has pleased you in your great wisdom and understanding to invite your son home because he has done his bit. Take the glory in the name of Jesus. We are thanking you for the family of Sir Charles. We thank you because he excelled in everything he did. And you gave him the grace. You showed him the mercy. You were with him all the way. All glory be to your holy name in the name of Jesus. 
Father, as we share in two, three minutes some commendations and prayers, let your presence help us. Let the Holy Spirit take over and let your name be glorified. Thank you, eternal Father, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you. Please have your seat. Um, I am not a guest minister. I am a colleague of Charles. I was not in B. I was in C. But uh, all through our years in Government College K2, there there is no gainsay that Charles was a distinguished fellow. Distinguished. Charles, first and foremost, was a human being. Charles was a good Christian. Charles was a good friend. Charles was a great scholar. Charles was a great footballer. Charles was a great boxer. Charles was an astute businessman. Charles was a successful entrepreneur. Charles was a great father. Charles was a very good husband. Charles was an exemplary philanthropist. Charles was every good thing a man may say about a successful person. And that is why I like us to listen very carefully to what I'm about to share. The message is titled The Sentence of Death. The Sentence of Death. And I'm reading 2 Corinthians chapter 1, three verses of scripture, verse 9 to 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9 to 11. But, but we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not which reserve the dead. Who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us? Ye also, helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. Now, it's not a message, but I say it's just an exhortation. So let's pick the lessons one after the other. Number one is the fact that we all have the sentence of death in us. We are talking about Charles now. But who knows who is going to go next. As a matter of fact, I don't like talking about death. Charles didn't die. He didn't die. He has just moved on to the next level. He has gone to be with his maker. Second Corinthians 3.18 He said, beholding us in a glass, the glory of the Lord, we are changed from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the Lord. So what has happened is that Charles has moved from one glory to another, from one glory to another, until finally he has stepped into the highest glory. And that is to be with the one who says, I am the resurrection and the life. That's number one. Therefore, I want to counsel us, ladies and gentlemen, that we are in this space. We don't know for how long. A brother was talking a while ago. He said that our life is not about duration, but about donation. Think about that. That's number one. If you are here tonight and you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, I beg you in the mighty name of Jesus, don't waste it. Don't waste your life. The beautiful thing about Charles, in case you don't know, 
I was not by his death bedside, but we were communicating. Patrick was always talking to us. Was that he had time to make peace with his maker. I have very solid assurance within me that Charles is right now in the bosom of Jesus. Where will you be in case you die tonight? The Bible says in Romans chapter 3 verse 23, it says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 again, it said, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Good works are good. But 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13 to 15. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 13 to 15. Tells us that every work we do shall be made manifest one day. He says that the fire of God is going to reveal it in the day of the Lord. So, if you have done well, like we have been showing and saying and telling about Charles, it says about 4 p.m., it says you shall receive a reward. It says, but if a man's works shall be burnt, he shall suffer loss. What beautiful legacy do we think that Charles should leave us? That, that one, he was a good child of God, and two, he was a good philanthropist. He did everything well. He did everything well. So I'd like you to keep that. Number two is the fact that the Bible says that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. Don't trust in yourself. Trust in God. Like I said, we don't know how long we're going to stay on this side of the universe. Why not move close to your maker? Trust in him. Trust in him. Trust in him. In Psalm 121, verse 7 and 8. Psalm 121, verse 7 and 8. He said, the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. The Lord shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time and forevermore. When you trust in the Lord, the Lord will keep you. He will keep you. And it says in verse 10, he said, he delivered us from so great a death. Ladies and gentlemen, we are all passing through death every day. The death of terrorism, the death of kidnapping, the death of COVID-19, the death of whatever. And then the challenges of the economy is there. But the Bible says that it is God who delivers us from so great a death. Fear not. Fear not. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. He said, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of love, the spirit of power, and the spirit of a sound mind. When you carry a sound mind, when you carry the spirit of Christ in you, you will be able to go through this life gloriously, easily, peacefully, restfully. Commendation. I do not have any commendation. I have only the word of God that I've shared with you. But I know that in the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 20, verse 32, Acts of Apostles 20, 32, the Bible says, I commend you, Apostle Paul was speaking there, unto God and unto the spirit of his grace that is able to keep you from falling and to give you an inheritance among them that have been sanctified. That is the only commendation that we can give the family and that we can share with ourselves. God and the spirit of his grace. Shall we bow our heads? If you're here tonight, I'm not asking, but I'm not making any altar call. But if you're here tonight, you know that all these things we were saying about Charles, we may not be able to say the same thing about you. Especially if you know that you have not made your ways right with your maker. Why not take two, three seconds to reconcile now? I just want us to meditate and pray. Let's use this tribute service for Charles as a moment of divine commendation. 
The greatest commendation a man may get is that he is saved. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and loses his soul? Nothing in this world, the totality of the wealth of the entire universe do not compare with the soul of a man. Where are you now? Are you in Christ or you are out? If you are out of Christ, why not come in tonight? Tell Jesus, I'm sorry for the life I have lived. Forgive me my sins. I have heard tonight that your gift is eternal life. Please give that to me. Save my soul. Forgive me my sins. Wash me in the precious blood of Jesus. Make me yours from tonight. Sanctify me, spirit, soul, and body. Remove my name from the book of death. Please, Lord, write my name in the book of life. So that when I meet Charles in heaven, I may say to him, I gave my life to Jesus at the night of tribute that was held for you. Thank you, Charles, for make, giving me that opportunity. Let's round up the prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If anyone has prayed that prayer, I pray along with you that the Lord will save you. Amen. The Lord will wash you. Amen. The Lord will sanctify you. Amen. The Lord will pick you up from today. Amen. He will walk with you. Amen. You will not fall. Amen. Neither will you fail. Amen. The Lord will keep you to the very end. Amen. And in his glorious kingdom, he will count you and us worthy. So shall it be in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. May I ask. May I request the family of Charles to step forward so that we can pray. Let's just step forward, please. Yes, 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 just step forward. It's all right. It's all right. Please, let's honor Charles and let's honor God as we bow our heads, rise on your feet, stretch your hands towards them. Just agree with me in prayer. Our time is fast spent. Just agree with us in prayer as we bless them in the name of the Lord. One more time, Father, we thank you for tonight. We appreciate you for everything that has happened in this place. Thank you for the first set of Government College Kitu who has put this program together in honor of Sir Charles Chukwemeka and Wogu. Thank you for the beginning of the program. Thank you for everything that has been done. Thank you for a glorious evening. Thank you for helping us to do all things so well. Take all the glory in the name of Jesus. Father, we are presenting to you the family, both immediate and extended, of Sir Charles Chukwemeka and Wogu. We thank you for the life and times of Charles. We thank you for everything that Charles was able to accomplish while he was here. We thank you because you gave him a family. You gave him father, mother, who incidentally, gloriously, have come earlier than he came, and that he's here, he's left behind brothers, sisters, wife, and children. Father, we lift these people up to you today. We pray for them jointly and severally that you will keep them. Please, Lord, bless this home. Amen. Bless his wife. Amen. Bless his children. Amen. Bless his brothers. Bless his sisters. Bless every member of that family that is still alive. Charles would have had many aspirations about the Nwogu family. Anything Charles could not wait to do. But God, you know it is good. Even in his absence, we agree in this meeting that, Father, you will go ahead and do it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that this family will not fall apart. Amen. 
The Lord himself will keep you. He will keep you from falling. He will keep evil far away from you. He will keep dangers far away from you. In the name of Jesus. The Lord will raise you up. The Lord will keep you under the shadow of his wings. You will not fall. You will not fail. You will not falter. Everything that just dreamt about for good for his family, you will continue to achieve it. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. you will go forward. You will go upward. You will never know a better yesterday. Your tomorrow shall be better than your today. In the mighty name of Jesus, it shall be well with you. It shall be well with the entire and world with family. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray that the children shall be greater than he was. The grandchildren will be greater than their parents. The great-grandchildren will be far greater than their own parents. In the mighty name of Jesus. This family will move from strength to strength, from glory to glory, from power to power, from wisdom to wisdom. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will be strong. You will be healthy. You will ride upon the wings of Jesus. He will carry you upon his wings. You will flow forward. You will go forward. You will go upward. In the name of Jesus. No evil shall befall you. No plague shall come near your dwelling. Every association of the wicked against this family, the Lord himself shall rebuke them. In the mighty name of Jesus. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the living God shall lift up a standard against them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every association of the wicked, the Lord will deal with them himself. He will rebuke the devourers for your sake. It shall be well with you in the mighty name of Jesus. All the days of your life, you shall be celebrated. All the days of your life, you will do well. All the days of your life, you will be wonderful. You will be excellent in the name of Jesus. Fault will not be found in you. Errors will not be found in you. You will know how to walk. You will know where to go. You will know how to talk. You will know what to eat. You will know how to dress. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will fulfill your days. You will fulfill your days. You will not die on another man's day. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will be healthy. You will be healthy. You will be strong. And you will live very long. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the inward family, I pray that the Lord will give you long life in the mighty name of Jesus. There shall be no infant of days in the mighty name of Jesus. You too will be houses. You will dwell in them. You will plant vineyards. You will eat the food thereof. You will not plant for others to eat. You will not be for others to inhabit. As the days of a tree, so shall your days be in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We commit, O oh Lord, the day of the burial to your hand. Please, Father, take control. Perfect everything. Let all be done to your glory. Thank you, eternal Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, please. You may return to your seat. Amen. It is well with you in Jesus' name. Your tomorrow shall be all right. God will keep you all the days of your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you very much. Amen. I will put our hands together for Jesus. Please, just for two minutes, I'd like to beg this gathering at this point in time to bring forward something that I omitted to do along the line. Please, apologies for going back a bit. I'd like to call on Mrs. Salvador, please. Mrs. Salvador, please. Thank you. Good evening, house. Ah, my name is Ayowale Miss Salvador. I'm the mother-in-law to Emeka Charles Nwogu. Uh, I knew Mr. Charles through his children. In those days at Olani, I used to take them to school and someday I met their father and uh, this lovely woman sitting here, Madam Teresa, became a friend too, not knowing that I was coming back to become in-law. <laughs> so somehow, I see Mr. Charles in stadium. When I go jogging, I see him. 
He makes fun of me. I make fun of him. I didn't still know he was going to be my in-law. I just greet him. How are the kids? The ones that brought, how are they doing? They're all fine. And somehow we became in-law. And um, Emeka and my daughter met, became husband and wife. Madam Teresa, my friend, teach me how to make a lot of soap. We go out together, come back. Then, Mr. Charles was a wonderful person. Had lovely children, a beautiful wife. The last days, I remember what he said to me. He was apologizing every now and then to me. That, oh, sorry. Sorry. When my daughter gave birth. He was always calling me, sorry, sorry, I'm, I could not come. I'm not, I'll come back very soon. I'll come back and see you. Don't worry, we'll do the naming ceremony properly. We will do this, we'll do that. And I just said to him, get well soon. And I had so much hope that I was going to get well. But in all things, like God says, said, give thanks. He knows better. He knows in all the time, all the period we were having faith and hope and believing, um, Madam Teresa had so much faith, so much hope. She told me he was not going anywhere. But God knows better. But we're all here today seated. I've heard so many beautiful things. I'm sitting next to a gentleman there. He showed me his phone, his chat, his chat with Mr. Charles. He says a whole lot of things, beautiful things about him. And I pray to God that the beautiful things he has done, his children will inherit in beautiful ways. And I pray to God that this family will continually to work stronger. Mr. Charles did not only take care of his own children. He had other children around him. May God bless his family. And may God bless the soul of dear Mr. Charles Mogo. It was a very young boy. So we all know the rest. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. Now I'll call on my Egbon and my big brother to speak on behalf of all of us putting on this. Mr. Ajayi, sorry, Engineer Ajayi Adeoye. Engineer Ajayi Adeoye. Thank you, thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, everybody I've spoken today, this night, my assignment is just to give a vote of thanks because we've heard so much about Charles and Wogu. He's a friend, a loving brother. We've had so much today. If not because of time, we can be here till morning. And one person or the other will have one thing or the other to say. We will not be tired. I know many people online will have also wanted to say one thing, one thing or the other, but because of time, we're not able to do that. Just to me, yes, loving, Stubborn when he was in school, like some of our uh, mates have said. But because of, of age, I want to tell you, in the last few years of my interaction with him, I've seen him with a lot of maturity. To me, when there's going to be any problem, he doesn't want to be associated with it. On our platform, when people start talking and fighting, he will call me behind and say, Ajay, your people have started you. I want to leave you. And I said, ah, okay, Charles, don't leave. Let me see what is happening. And by the time I talk to him, he will be there. Like you've heard today, nothing done by government college, K2, that Charles was not part of it. If we're looking for 500,000, in fact, if he's not ready to do more than half of it, you'll see him putting down substantial part of it. And like you've heard today, many of us have passed away, but this is the first time 
of organizing a night of tributes for one of us. You can begin to contemplate how much love we have for Jazz. You can begin to think about it. All of us are here. That goes to show that we really love him. And that is just because of what he has planted. The good work he has done will continue to live along with him. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you. Let me thank the first set government college kids who had really put this event in order. I tell you, this, this event has just taken us maybe three weeks when we have a feed and we're thinking, we say, what do we do? And we say, let's put up a night. A lot of ideas came. I said, okay, let's do a night of tribute because we don't even know what the family will be doing. And I said, okay, fine, let's organize this. Within three weeks, I want to tell you the type of support that we have received, very, very enormous. And that shows that Charles live a good life. He didn't look down on anybody. Anytime any of us is in need, he is there to support. And that is an example to all of us in your little capacity. Please lend a helping hand to your fellow human beings. And I know you will reap the reward in multiples. I want to thank the first set once again, especially the committee that has put up these things. They have done very well and have done us proud. We are very, very happy and thank you once again. Uh, I want to thank all of you that heard about it and left your offices and homes and came down to join to celebrate Charles and Wogu with us. I thank you all. And I pray that you go back to your different homes. The Lord will grant you Johnny Messes. We pray that such a thing we will be far away, like we've had our pastor said today. We owe, we all owe that. At one day or the other, we begin to drop. We're all in the same bus. And when you get your own bus stop, you have to come down. But at that time, I pray that the Lord, in his infinite mercies, will grant you that strength that you'll be happy. You want to face, go back home because we all know that this part of creation is like a school and we have to go back home. Charles, yes, we are saying, yes, it's young, very young. He has done what he could do nicely and is joining back home. So, one day, one day, we will also join him as we intend to go back to paradise, which is where we all came from. Once again, I want to thank you. Before I close, I want to invite Emeka Abi. Please, can you be here? Uh, on behalf of Government College, Ketu. Yes, on behalf of, because we've said them um, will not leave you, except if on your own, you want to leave us, they will not leave you because of what your dad has done while he was with us. And as a sign of love and talking, we want to give you this, because if Charles was to be here today, he will also put on this. We want to give you this. We wish you all the strength. The prayers that have been prayed upon you today will continue to grow 
and bless you. The shoe that your father has left behind may not be too heavy for you to carry. Please continue to follow the good path of life and the Lord will continue to bless you. Once again, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Uh, whatever the burial arrangements, please, through a uh, link, Mr. Lai Otufonue will get to know of the details and then whatever we can do will also be available to participate. Once again, I want to thank everybody. Uh, program coordinator, our uh, pastor, I want to thank you. Our uh, juniors who are here, I want to thank you. His professional colleagues, his friends and families. Once again, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Praise God. We thank the Almighty God. And um, like he said, it took three good weeks. And when we decided on the dates, in faith, without a venue, and as we stepped out, the Lord provided all we need. We bless his holy name. I'd like to call on somebody that was with us in the beginning. For those that know him very well, Maradona plays good football. Messi plays good football. But in those days, he's a top one. We call him Leo and his magic boots. When we were in school, Leonard Odudu. He's going to give the closing prayer. Leonardo Dudu, please. Dr. Leonardo Dudu. Thank you, buddy. My job is simple to pray. Let us pray then. <laughs> thank you. Father, we thank you for this wonderful evening. We thank you for the many graces you have showered on us. We thank you for all you've done to make this day successful. We ask you, in your mercy and in your love, first to bless the Nwogo family most especially. So grant them abundant graces as they journey through this phase of their life. Give them blessings, give them protection. With all they do, from now until the final barrier will come into your hands. Protect them, guide them, and lead them. You have now become a father to them, and we trust and we hope and we believe that their lives will continue to be testimonies of blessings. We pray for all those who have come here to honor our great friend Charles. We ask for graces, we ask for blessings. And as we continue to show love for one another, we will continue to grow in strength and grow in love. And as we go back today to our various homes, may the Lord guide, protect and bless us. I will now enjoin us all to share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, Surely God's, God's goodness and blessings shall follow us all the days, days of, of our lives, lives. and we shall bless in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. May the souls of Charles Mogu rest in perfect peace. Amen. Amen.
all must be well. Please, if you know, if you know you are a member, you are an old student of Government College K2, please come to the front to. If you go to our school, please come front to. The Lord will move you to the front. Please come to the front. The Lord has moved you to the front. Please come to the front. The Lord is waiting for you here, please. To the love of God, our Savior, all will be well. Free and chainless is his favor. All, all is well. Precious is the Oh, oh. 